Hello and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So module 27 is just a few days away, launching November the 7th. So here I want to give you 12 tips so you can prepare for the next module and know what to expect so you can get a bit of a head start. So tip number one is new seals gear. We'll be getting seals of the spider god and with it comes a new armor set which is very mediocre just stepping stone gear. The shirt and pants we've seen already from the heroic encounters in the demon web pit zone, Narbondalin. The pants are very good with Harold's decree. Basically, they work a bit better than they say they do. You just need one teammate further than 30 feet and you gain the 10% stats. 5% power and defense. But what this means is that the sails of the north are gone. You can still buy the stuff for Seals of the Dragon, but no longer will you be able to buy any of this gear, including these Grand Alliance weapons. That's quite a lot of gear. Now, the only real useful ones here, to be honest, was the headpiece here. That would give the 7.5% accuracy when your stamina is over 75%. And this headpiece is pretty useful for damage dealers. And it's still pretty viable to this date. If you have loads of crit strike, don't need the crit strike helmet, this is a good option, at least for most damage dealer classes. But it's going away. So make sure you have a few days left to grab this if you don't already have it. So tip number two, the new trial. The defense of the moon dancer. What item level do you need in order to run it? Well, if you just want to go into the normal version, you'll need 25,000 on a private queue, but it won't have any unique rewards there. So kind of pointless other than to get a general flow of how it plays out. But you can jump up a difficulty tier to advanced, but you need 50,000 item level again on private queue. This time it does have some decent rewards like legendary armor and weapons and some rings and shirt and pants along with a mythic set here, including the artifact, which you will probably be able to sell for a pretty penny. And then there is master. You need 85,000 item level again on private queue. And this does have some different rewards, most notably mythic armor, mythic weapons, legendary rings, and otherwise the rest is the same, including it dropping the new artifact. So make sure to have those item level requirements if you wanna be running on those specific queues. Have your build ready set for that. Tip number three, make sure to have a hybrid build. This trial is a big mix of beating up multiple enemies. Sometimes you want to have good damage against one target, other times you want to have good damage against lots of enemies. So you need to have a hybrid build, a build that's gonna be able to fit both roles. Something you may very well have set up for yourself if you were ever running Tiamat, and we're serious with that. Some classes it's easier than others, and sometimes you may just have to do some power switching. I do recommend using the Pateri bonus with 11.25% damage against bosses in this trial because those lieutenants are considered bosses and you do wanna have that extra damage against those. Those are the most important things to kill as quickly as possible in this trial. And then there is the boss at the very end, which you also need to beat up. Not as important with regards to time pressure, but still you'll get a lot of damage off it and it can be very beneficial to have that bonus. Highly recommend it still. Tip number four. What striker companion should you use? As a damage dealer, we have a lot of choices. Should we be using a single target one, a multi-target one, or a hybrid one? Well, I've tested multiple of them out. The best one to help your team succeed without, let's say, getting unnecessary deaths is 100% the Minotaur Mercenary. You could have everybody using this companion and you're going to see a much, much smoother run. He will immediately control the enemies, causing them to not deal any damage and will also group them up meaning anybody who's particularly a melee damage dealer can easily get all the damage against them. Just a massive bonus to use him, but he's not gonna help you personally in dealing damage. His damage isn't that great. You can just even run a single target companion like the pseudo dragon and over the entire trial, you'll see it will net more damage than just running the minotaur. Same with, let's say if I was to run Regis, he will fall behind in damage because of this later phase becomes pretty single target heavy. The enemies 
usually get killed pretty quickly with like a daily or two from especially a wizard if you're running them in the group. Maybe if you don't have a wizard, they'll stick around a bit longer and thus your companion get more damage. But I've just found a single target companion can deal more damage than any of the AoE damage companions, including versus the Shatter Kai Witch. Pseudo Dragon was just outperforming it. And that will be the same with the Green Scale Bowman and the other top ones here on the single target damage list. Just maybe not the Blaspheme Assassin. She'll be switching targets too much. She won't be able to get those bleed stacks up and then be able to actually get this number of damage. So tip number five is to have some Zen available. If you want to be unlocking the trial day one, you will need to get to 200 progress on the campaign. In order to do that, you're going to have to purchase a Head Start pack from the Zen market. And as per the previous modules, it's always costed 1,500 Zen. You can do your daily invoking to collect the Celestial Bags of Refining, and you can get coupons from those. And you can get 25% off coupon, which is going to work on that pack, which you'll buy here. Tip number six, if you're really serious about farming the trial, I highly recommend having some legendary dragon keys. Again, they just come from the Zen market. They'll allow you to open the second chest, whereas normally you'll have to do some farming and you can only ever get once per day an astral key. But even then, if you don't intend to farm this trial, I still recommend getting one of these astral keys per day. So when the time does come and you want to run this trial, you'll have the keys to open that second chest in order to get those rewards. Again, it's dropping that new artifact, which will sell for decent amount and it's got a pretty good set for it as well for damage dealers so a lot of people will most likely want this so there will be some value in farming the trial and having those keys and basically double your chances to get this if you can open that second chest so either have some legendary dragon keys stocked up if you want to be farming within the first few days or make sure you're getting the currency to buy those keys for when you unlock the trial the following week so tip number seven is mini boss locations. In order to get those keys to buy them from the campaign, you need the currency doubloons. Additionally, you'll want those doubloons for the companion gear. And the way you'll want to get those doubloons is generally through mini boss farming. You'll normally get some by doing quests and heroic encounters, but the heroic encounters are pretty awful to be honest in this new place here especially since you can't just instance hop you'll have to travel through the map to get to them and there'll probably be a lot of confusion on which map is where and yeah i don't think that's going to be easy for people to create heroic farm trains here so the easiest option will be farming mini bosses and well i just made a map for that you can check out the video I made yesterday, or you can screenshot this and the red dots basically where the locations are and the red line here in this one. The mini bosses give you 20 of those doubloons, which is the equivalent of a major heroic encounter. So it can be a very viable strategy to farm those, especially since they have a respawn timer of just five minutes. So the next tip is for healers. With module 27, the mythic combat enchantment, the refulgent fortification, is getting fixed. It will now properly not expire when your target uses their stamina. This gives a total of 5% damage reduction and 15% movement speed whenever you cast a single target heal on them. This can be very useful to help a tank mitigate the damage from a tank buster or just to give them a burst of movement speed whenever you feel like it. You can see it works now. We can cast it on ourselves. That gives us it there and it will no longer drop off when we go to block. So that's very nice. Healers, be prepared to use this if you want to min-max your team support. And the rest of you, well, you could do some farming of the Menza Branson campaign and be able to purchase it, upgrade it, sell it, and there'll probably be a few more selling since it's been fixed and people will actually be using it. Tip number nine is stats. The Paladin Aura has been updated to now give 4% critical strike instead of just 2%. This is a reliable stat bonus. So if you're running with a Paladin, and particularly a Paladin tank, they will usually run this aura. And so you can build around now 4% instead of just 2%. Again, if you're min-maxing and you're going to be running trials and such, and you know you have Paladin there, you could fit that into your build to optimize. 
Tip number 10. If you've been living under a rock and are not aware, the Barbarian tank is getting significant improvements with Modular 27. It shall be very viable to run as a Barbarian tank. You'll have a much easier job holding threat along with some survivability improvements. I highly recommend those of you who play Barbarian DPS work on getting a tank build. There is always a shortage of tanks and if you're feeling neglected by being a melee DPS and not getting into groups, switch to tank guys. You're going to get in an awful lot more groups once you actually know what you're doing. Queue times will be shorter as a whole and it is a bit of a different experience could be fun for you. I made an overview video here of the barbarian improvements and the big part is there for the sentinel. Massive increase to its threat and I give some suggestions there also on what powers you might want to consider using to hold that threat. Watch that if you're interested. Tip number 11 is two free coal moats with this module launch. There shall be one that you can claim after four days of logging in with the claim free items thing here. Log in for four days and you'll get it. Very simple, nice value. Additionally, there will be a new battle pass coming and you'll be able to get a free coalescent moat from the first part. This is just an example of the previous battle pass where they also had it. All you'll have to do is just your random cues and you'll be able to get that free colmo in no time. Minimum 13 days and you'll get it. Don't miss out. Now the final tip, tip 12, is overloads. This new trial has a new type of enemy called Astral Elves. And with the campaign, Light of Xoraxis, you'll be able to spend that general campaign currency to get new overloads. One says it will deal extra damage against Astral Elves, another just in general in Wild Space, and then you have the wards to go with that. Just to be aware, I have tested the Astral Elf Slayer, and yes, it works in the majority of this trial, except against the last boss, Captain Zurlar. Also, the issue with this overload is it only affects your at-wills, encounters, and daily powers. And that is not all of your damage. You deal a lot of damage from other abilities, like mount combat powers, damage over time effects, class features, bonuses, etc. So in most cases, it can be better, rather than just running the Slayer overload, to just run Rage of Flames. They are very close though, so... If you don't want to get a Rage of Flames, yes, you can just run the Astral Elf Slayer. It will work against all the ad groups, all the clearing of trash enemies, and against those lieutenants, just not against the last boss, the captain. It's just, your damage isn't that important against him until you're at the last 15%. So it's not such a big deal. And overall, again, they're very close and I'm personally not gonna bother farming for Astral Elf Slayers. I'm just gonna run Rage of Flames. But the other overload, the overload that says it would just give you damage in Wild Space. As far as I tested, it did not work whatsoever. I tested in the new trial, I tested in all the zones, I checked my combat log here, I checked in ACT, and it just was not giving me any damage bonus at all. Not sure what's up with that. For a tank, with regards to the wards, it's also like, if the Astral Elf ward is not working against the last boss, which it most likely won't since the Slayer doesn't work, then I don't see the point in running it run an overload that's actually going to work against everything so it's actually going to work against him for those tank busters that's the only time you really take threatening damage unless you want to be face tanking the sniper which is kind of silly just play the mechanic on a last note as a bonus tip there's not a lot of new gear you'll want to be getting with this module. The main thing you'll want is first of all the companion gear from the campaign. You just have to do some questing and you'll be able to buy it. If you get the head start pack, you should be able to buy all three pieces you, of what you want for your character in the first week. Otherwise, it's going to take you the first and the second week to be able to get enough currency since you're limited by a weekly haul with these marks. Other than that, yes, there's new gear from the trial, but there's only a very select few pieces that are any good. Gear from the Master Demon Web Pits is just better but for newer players if you can get to that 50,000 item level mark to jump into the advanced version 
that is a big boost this gear it's just got massive item level on it. It's crazy. And the weapon set is at least useful compared to other things you might be running. Within Wild Space, it's nearly as good as the Stormforge weapons, which at this point are quite a grind to get. And you already need quite a lot of item level to get them. So you might just want to get these weapons instead. Higher item level, give you a boost up there, specifically in unscaled content. In terms of scaled content though, there is some gear which you can get to like gain a pretty big boost in scaled content. And that gear you can get by doing the new thing called invasions. You can get currency for it and you can see the gear here. The arms are going to give you up to 20% damage in scaled content and the boots up to 20% damage resistance in scaled content. Pretty massive to try and pick up both of those. Just pretty expensive and will take you a good while farming these invasions all you'll have to do is wait till this progress bar is filled then go to your wild space map here go to the bottom right sphere system here and then go click invasions enter ideally with a group kill enemies and you'll get those buzz jewels which you will need to buy that gear and i highly recommend it if you're running like random queues and such You'll need some marks, which is, again is just your weekly haul of campaign currency, astral diamonds, and again, a lot of those buzz jewels. So hopefully this has been somewhat insightful, you guys, and helps you out with your preparation for module 27. To know what to expect and to know what to kind of do once it launches. Special thank you again to all these channel members for their added support, and we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.